So as you can see, I'm on the road today. I've actually been driving for around two hours and the sciatica is starting to kick in, but I'm finally here at the Roehampton Club, ready for a day of coach education training. I've recently been selected to deliver a brand new girls tennis initiative, which has been hosted by the LTA in partnership with Prime Video and Emma Raducanu. Now, I'm not sure that Emma Raducanu is actually gonna be here today as I know she's due to be playing Indian Wells in the next week or two. But what I do know is Kim Kleisters is supposed to be here presented. So really looking forward to that. So I'm gonna take you guys inside. I won't be talking to the camera like this as there's gonna be a lot of coaches in there. And to be honest, it's a little bit cringe. So I'll be on the other side of the camera. And if you hang around to the end of the video, I'll tell you what I learned. Let's go. To start off the day, all of the coaches headed into the conference room where the LTA and Prime Video announced what the initiative was all about. In short, the initiative is a six week course for new girls to get into the sport. This initiative came about on the back of Emma Raducanu's success at the US Open, as this was Amazon Prime's first airing of a tennis tournament. And obviously that match alone got so many views and brought in a lot of revenue for Prime Video, and they pledged to invest that back into British women's tennis. What was interesting when hearing about why this initiative came about was some of the stats. Now, although tennis is ahead of the game when it comes to other sports and female participation, it's still behind, it's not a 50-50 split. When kids first get into tennis in this country, in the UK, around 55% of children are boys and 45% of children are girls, which is a pretty even split, but it could be better. When this is compared to all tennis players in the country, not just children, it goes to a 60-40 split. But when you take that a step further and look at players that are playing every single week, that changes to 70-30 split. And there's an even bigger gap when it comes to competitions, which is somewhere near to an 80-20 split. And this is reflected when we look at the British workforce of tennis coaches. Only 23% of coaches in this country are female. So what this information shows us that at grass level, the split is fairly even, but as the players go through their years in tennis, there tends to be a much bigger drop off in girls. And so although this initiative is aimed at getting new girls into tennis, it's also aimed at retaining them. And I'll explain how this initiative is gonna do that later on in the video. After this, we had a panel discussion. This is where Kim Kleisters was due to join us, but unfortunately she got COVID and canceled 24 hours before. So we had the pleasure of Sam Smith, who is ex-British number one tennis player. And actually she was amazing in this discussion panel. Alongside her was Lauren Herrier, a professional footballer who also runs her own equality charity as well. During this discussion, we heard from both athletes about some of the barriers and struggles they've had being a female in sport. And some of them were quite shocking, to be honest, but it was great to hear that their experiences improved through time. And now looking at tennis today, things are getting a lot, lot better. And with the help of this course, hopefully we can do more for British women's tennis. What was quite fun was this conversation went a little bit off piste and Sam Smith actually said that the biggest problem in tennis in general is that the sport is no longer cool. Now bear with me on this one because you and I probably think that tennis is a pretty cool sport, but we're biased, we're inside the sport. For people outside of the sport, nowadays it doesn't seem as cool as it did back in the 80s and 90s. When you look at sport 20 to 30 years ago, the only way that you could consume sport was through the television. There were no other outlets like we have today with Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So when you're looking at how children consume tennis, it's primarily through these social media channels. Other sports have moved forward in many ways to make their sport more attractive to the younger demographic. However, tennis hasn't yet managed to do this as well as some of the other sports. What Sam also said is tennis is pretty safe. When you listen to the commentary in tennis matches and post-match interviews, the players and commentators are pretty much saying the same things all of the time. There are no real characters. Now, of course, there are some exceptions. You've got players like Nick Kyrgios who are terrible role models for children. However, in reality, teenagers love watching his matches. Now, I could talk about this for hours, but I'd like to hear from you guys. Do you think tennis is cool enough? Let me know in the comments below. After the panel discussion, we headed to lunch and then onto court for the practical session, which I was really looking forward to. During this practical session, we had a presentation from Jo Ward, who is in charge of coach education in the UK. She's actually studied a PhD in females in sport, so it was really good to hear her insights. Jo went into the psychosocial elements of coaching girls in sport and what we as coaches could do better to encourage them, to empower them, and to inspire them to stay in the sport for longer. 
To be honest, I was a little bit disappointed in how deep this went into the topic of coaching girls. However, there is a follow-on course which goes more into the technical and tactical development in girls, which I'm definitely gonna book onto. After Joe's presentation, we headed onto court and practiced a few little drills and games that would be ideal for coaching in these new girls groups. After we finished on court, we went back to the conference room where we got given some kit. So, got this hoodie, which is um, from the Andy Murray collection. Um, I actually got a t-shirt as well, which they're gonna send to me because they didn't have um, my size left. And they also gave us some promotional material like flyers and banners so that we could promote our courses once we get them up and running later this year. So finally, what did I actually learn from this course and how am I gonna grow girls tennis in the UK? The first is that when coaching girls in particular, it's really important to focus more around the process as opposed to the result. Now, this is my ethos in general as a coach anyway, especially with junior players, is that we need to try to help them to develop a growth mindset. And through focusing on processes like how to do things rather than the results and the outcomes is a really positive way to get them to progress. If you fixate on results, it's either gonna be good or bad. And of course, if it's good, they're gonna stay in tennis. If it's bad, they're probably gonna stop. So focusing on processes is a far more healthy way to keep players playing in the sport for longer. The second thing is how to build competitions into these girls' sessions. And it's important to use a step-by-step -step approach. So rather than the girls entering their first LTA competition and having that as their first competitive experience, it's by making sure that we slowly introduce competition into their usual sessions, which is something that I already do. First of all, it's by setting competitive situations up with a process goal. So it might be that during sessions, rather than counting how many points players win, it might be that they count how many times they get back to a good ready position. Although this is a process driven competition, it's still a competition. The girls will be competing against their own scores as opposed to against others. Once they get comfortable with this, the next step is introducing collaborative competition. So it might be team competitions where they're playing doubles or they're playing singles against other players from a different team and they're collating their scores. This can be a really nice way to introduce competition as if players really struggle in their own matches, their teammates can pick up the scores. Now, of course, tennis is all about results at the end of the day. So it's really important that we do introduce competition and results oriented goals. But it's important that we do this as a gradual process. So once the girls have entered in team competitions and they start to feel more comfortable with winning and losing and understanding how competition works, that's when we can get them into more one-on-one -on -one competition. At the end of the day, we want our players to love the competitive situations. We want them to enjoy the feeling of being nervous before a match and feeling pressure. But it's important that we do this in a step-by-step -step way. As if we go there too early, the chances are they're probably gonna fall out of love of tennis. As we know, it's a tough sport and you have to lose lots and lots of matches before you get good. So finally, what's my plan to grow girls tennis in this country? I'm gonna be setting up three new courses for girls at our club. It's gonna be tough as I'm really, really limited with time. However, I'm working with our new coach to make sure that I'm freed up for three hours a week. In each of those sessions, there's gonna be 12 spaces. So we'll have a capacity for 36 girls. And after that six week block, we aim to do a follow-up course, which is gonna end in a team competition and a mother and daughter or parent and child competition. Hopefully, after running 12 weeks of coaching and ending in a competition, the girls will have a love of tennis and hopefully stay in the sport for years to come. And who knows, hopefully, they'll have a career in tennis, whether that be playing, coaching, or something different. Now, I'm fully aware that I'm a male and these girls are gonna need some female role models. So we're hopefully gonna get some of our teenage girls that are on the program to become tennis leaders so that they can help to assist me in these sessions and give those young girls a real good role model. Now, I'm not saying I can't be a role model as I consider myself to be a pretty good role model for boys and girls. However, in my opinion, it's really important that these young girls have an older girl to look up to and to show them what they can do in tennis. So thanks as always for watching this video all the way through to the end. I hope you enjoyed this vlog style. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. Take care. I look forward to seeing you next time.